welcome. Originally, we assumed Kenny Veach's girlfriend, Sharon Pilgrim, was the last and only one to hear from Kenny Veach before he disappeared into the desert. However, what if I was to tell you it wasn't entirely true and that there was somebody else that received a final text message from Kenny Veach which has never been revealed before until now. Hi, welcome. So yes, what I'm about to share with you has never been seen before. It's a screenshot of a text conversation between Kenny Veach and his nephew, Hunter Veach. It was the last text Hunter ever received from Kenny Veach. Now, Susan Veach did pass this on to me and confirmed it was okay and appropriate to share it publicly. Just wanted to confirm that. So yes, let's get into the text conversation. I'll read it out first of all and then break it down after and analyze the language. So the text conversation took place on Facebook Messenger. Hunter Veach replied saying, where are you gonna be hiking? Maybe one of the times I can come home, I'll stop by and join you on one. I'm sure I'll enjoy whatever it is that you got me. Thank you. Kenny replies, I'm going to try for 45 miles out in the mountain ranges north of Vegas. It's definitely going to be one of my more brutal hikes. I'll be solo because it's just too dangerous to bring anyone with me. It's way harder and farther than what you and I ever did. Hunter replies, Sounds it. Definitely send some pictures if you take any while you're out there. Would like to see what all you did. Kenny replies, Okay, take care till then. Hunter replies, Will do. You too. And that was it of the conversation. Kenny never texted Hunter ever again after that. So after reading the text messages, maybe for some of you, you might be thinking, oh, well, I wasn't expecting that. Or, oh, that kind of highlights that theory and outcome. Well, what I will say is there are some key words to take from that conversation in terms of the tone and the way Kenny responds. And that is hiding something. It seems like Kenny Veach is hiding something from Hunter Veach due to certain words and language used. We'll get into that shortly. In terms of the different perspectives and theories you could link to what Kenny says, it's like the three different ones. One being heading north, the heading north theory, going as far as possible and then whatever happens, happens, such as hidden forest trail, if not beyond that. Second theory being Kenny faking his own death, going to the mine shaft, dropping his items there, sent, and then backtracking the way he came, getting picked up. And then the final theory, common one, is suicide in the desert, somewhere we don't know of. So with all that in mind, let's break down the text conversation and look at the first message by Hunter. So the bit about Hunter asking Kenny, where are you going to be hiking? Maybe sometime I can join in. That's simplistic. I guess this is already mid-conversation of whatever they're talking about. Um, I do remember seeing photos of Kenny Veach and Hunter Veach out on a hike in a previous video. Can't remember where it is, but I do remember watching it. So that adds up. But the main part of the message I highlighted in red lines is where it says, I'm sure I'll enjoy whatever it is that you got me. That's kind of interesting because it seems like Kenny Veach during the conversation was saying, oh, I've got some kind of gift present I want to give to you. Or maybe it's something he's going to go out and get maybe in the desert. Because as we know, Kenny Veach has collected all kinds of items and even some cactuses for his own house and decorations. Maybe Kenny was going to go out on another hike, collect something to give to Hunter as a present for returning back from his hike. If that being the case, it seems like Kenny Veach wasn't planning on going out one more time and never returning if he was going to give something to Hunter afterwards, right? Now, Kenny's response is the most interesting part for numerous reasons. As you can see, highlighted in red are certain key lines he came out with, such as trying for 45 miles in the mountain ranges north of Vegas. 
Now that is an extreme amount of distance to cover as a hiker in that environment and terrain. Just to simply put it in perspective, when Kenny Veach went out on his MK hike route, going through Joe May Canyon, then going through Picture Canyon and looping all the way back, total of about eight to nine miles or so, took quite a few hours. And as you saw in the unreleased footage, he was knackered, exhausted, tired, beaten up and sore in the legs. So how the hell would he be able to cover 45 miles and return back successfully? I don't know. Now, it depends if he had equipment with him. Surely he would have had to brought camping equipment and extra supplies just to be able to survive that long out there and to get back as well. Now, it kind of ties in with what Sharon said at some point, Kenny's girlfriend saying how he was uh, texting her saying, oh, I'm going to go out two to three days and then come back. That would kind of make sense. One of those overnight stays, if not longer, due to the excessive amount of distance. Now, to be honest, I'm not quite sure how much mileage Kenny Veach could do per day. Maybe it's more than two to three days it would take. And also, I'm not sure if Kenny means 45 miles there and back or 45 miles there, 45 miles back. I'm not quite sure which one, but it's one of the two. So yeah, definitely one thing to consider, you know, being out there in that environment, that terrain is dangerous enough. Being out there that long and covering that much distance and then having to do the same back is yet another extreme. So I don't know what Kenny was thinking. As said, it's one of his more brutal hikes. The question is, is this a massive step up to what he originally was doing in the past? Because if it is such an extreme step up, that could possibly hint towards the idea Kenny succumbed to the environment or whatever dangers were out there at the time because he wasn't prepared. It was too much of a step up for his body, for his mind. You know what I'm saying? Because if he's not used to doing that sort of distance with whatever equipment he's got, he wouldn't have been able to survive and be successful. So you've got to take that in mind. Now, the next key bit to move on to is where he says, I'll be solo. It's just too dangerous to bring anyone with me. Well, yeah, that makes sense. As I've just described before, the distance, the environment, the terrain, it is all dangerous and extreme. But another way you could interpret it about Kenny being solo and not wanting anyone to go with him is for three different reasons. Either one, Kenny wanted to push himself to the absolute max and reach a certain target goal and he felt there was nobody else around that could compete or keep up with him and therefore he didn't want to endanger anyone's life and he didn't want any family members to get hurt so that's why he went all by himself. Or number two, Kenny was going to go out there, commit suicide and he didn't want anyone to come with him because it would be too upsetting to see. It wouldn't be right. Plus, it would mean they would know where Kenny was at and then would retrieve him and he may not want to be found, as what the girlfriend said. Or, number three, Kenny did go out there to the mine shaft, drop some personal items to make it seem like he's gone missing in the desert, but in actual facts, he returned back, got picked up, and then went in hiding and is still alive. And he didn't want Hunter to go with him because then Hunter would know. Hunter might reveal it and expose Kenny Veach, maybe report him or just tell other family members. And then the whole plan is ruined and Kenny can't hide for whatever reason. So that's the other possibility. So the last part of the conversation where Hunter says, make sure to take pictures whilst you're out there. And Kenny says, okay, take care till then. Kind of interesting because from what Sharon said, Kenny didn't take a camera, a video camera with him, but he supposedly took a camera for taking photos. So I guess that would make sense. And with Kenny saying, okay, it sounds like he's agreeing, like he will take photos whilst he's out there. Well, if that's the case, and from what Sharon said about Kenny maybe going to commit suicide, why would Kenny take a camera with him in the first place if he's going to commit suicide? What's the point taking extra pieces of equipment for no real use if he's not planning on returning back to share those photos with friends and family? 
It doesn't make any sense. Now, one additional point to make note of, I think in a, a recent comment or something, Sharon said something about Kenny didn't take a camera with him. Now, I don't know if Sharon is backtracking on what she originally said and contradicting herself, or she just is sticking to the same story of he didn't take a video camcorder, just a camera. I'm not quite sure there, but either way, it's a bit odd. And also, where Kenny says, take care till then. What does that mean, till then? Till the next time he responds? Till the next time Kenny returns back with the gift to give to Hunter? You know what I'm saying? Kind of strange. It sounds like he will return from that message. Now, before we move on to what Susan has to say from her point of view, one thing I just wanted to point out it's kind of interesting how Kenny told his girlfriend, or ex-girlfriend, that he was going to look for the M cave one more time, and if he fails to find it, he's then going to head north. Now, when he texted Hunter, he just said, I'm going north for 45 miles, and that's it. He mentioned nothing about the M cave, which is kind of interesting. So I wonder why there's differing stories between the two people. Did Kenny make a slip up, a mistake when texting? Does it reveal something? Well, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. So let's get into what Susan has to say now about this. So Susan said, I realise every person is different, but before my son took his life, he reached out to everyone, even people he had lost touch with and told each one how much he loved or appreciated them. This message from Kenny Veach pretty much seems like a casual message. What is a contradiction is he mentions how dangerous it will be, therefore going by himself. You can look at that comment two different ways, but either way it comes back to he didn't want anyone to know where and what he was doing. So yeah, I get what Susan is talking about and agree with her with the whole casual conversations thing. And no, I'm not talking about casual conversations with Gloria and Eileen, that channel. <laughs> no, but yeah, in terms of casual conversations with Kenny Veach, his tone of voice, like in text, how he responds, it is very casual. It's not like sensitive, it's not emotional, it's I'm going for 45 miles across the desert terrain, you can't come with me, it's too dangerous. Bye. Take care till then. That's what it's like. Monotone. Not, oh, it's going to be difficult. Oh, can't manage. Now, as Susan said, everyone responds and acts differently. But, you know, she's experienced it. She's seen it. Um, and it's happened many other times, just in general, in the world where people could be hard faced or there could uh, be a certain way. And then the change last minute, moments before they do go off and do what they do in which they don't come back. And it always tends to be a message too late to read, a message too late to intervene, intervention to save them, that sort of tone, that, that sort of timing. In this case, Kenny was just simply saying, I'm going to go and then I'm going to come back and hand you that gift. So different story, really. And when you tie in all the different factors as well, the fact that he's got a gun with him, the fact that he's taken it with him on multiple other hikes in the past for protection of himself. The fact that he supposedly has brought a camera with him to take photos of the area and Hunter wants him to take photos and then to show it when he comes back. The fact that Kenny has some kind of gift or present he's going to give to Hunter. Well, obviously, Kenny needs to be alive to be able to return back and give it to him. And the simple fact that Kenny said, take care till then, like something's going to happen then, maybe like when he comes back, then he can give whatever, share whatever. So what's going on in between? Change of course, change of direction, misdirection, faking one's death, maybe. So yeah, let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Give your opinions, ideas, thoughts and theories to what is the case? What is the situation? Um, does this text message reveal something? Is Kenny hiding something? Is there a change in direction and things? Let me know what you think. Um, so, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and found it interesting. I'll see you in the next one. That's it for now, and goodbye.